So the problem, when you have a contamination of the ground, of the soil, the problem is the half-life of the radioactive substances. Cesium-137 has a half-life of 30 years. It means that today, 25 years after the Chernobyl accident, you still have a huge contamination of the soil, especially in Ukraine near the Chernobyl nuclear plant. In this box, we have a sample of soil that we collected near Chernobyl. It is highly contaminated. That's why we are storing it in a box shielded with lead. But still, gamma radiation, which are emitted by cesium, are so powerful that they can cross the shielding. The amount of radiation now is about 300 counts per second. It's more than three times above the natural radiation. And if we make a measurement directly on this very small sample of soil, it's about only 30 grams of soil. We see that we have a radiation of about 2,300 counts per second, which is quite huge. And you see the influence of the distance. The closer you are from the sample of soil, the, the highest is the amount of radiation and the risk for your health. In the case of a small object which is highly contaminated like a sample of soil, a bag with dust from your vacuum cleaner, a filter from your car that has been accumulating the radioactive dust from the air, in this case you can protect yourself using three different uh, things. The first one is the distance. The second one is shielding using lead, concrete, etc. And the third very important thing is to limit the time that you spend near this radioactive substance. Because the radiation and the dose is accumulating. For example, when we say that we measure somewhere 400 counts per second, it means that at each second 400 radioactive gamma rays are entering this device and are giving a dose to this machine. And if it is your body, your body is receiving this dose and it will accumulate. If it is one second, it's 400 counts. Two seconds, it's 800 counts. Three seconds, etc., etc. So you accumulate this dose. It's the reason why you have to put this contaminating thing away and do not spend too much time near this source of radiation. Okay, now we will measure the dose rate on this sample of contaminated soil using the radix. So immediately we see that the, the amount of gamma radiation which is emitted is quite high. We hear the sound beep, and we see that even after a few seconds we have quite a huge number, it's 9.99, which is about 10, 10 microsieverts per hour. It's about 100 times above the natural background radiation in this room. And the amount of radiation is too high for this device. It cannot measure a figure above 10 microsieverts per hour. That's the reason why you cannot use it if you live in an area which has a high contamination. You have to use it in areas which are less contaminated. So now we will compare those two devices. In the case of this one, he has quite a huge detector. 
So it's very sensitive. And it will detect this radioactive sample more or less immediately. So with this kind of device called a scintillometer, you can make a cartography, a mapping of contamination of dose rate, even walking with your device like that. So you can just walk and check the radiation from the ground in your environment. With the radex, he has a small Gegermüller tube, so he will detect less radiation and he cannot really react immediately. With him, you need to take more time. You have to put it and to wait for some time to have a good measurement. So he is good for some application, but not if you want to make very quickly a mapping of huge areas.